It's not Levio's song. It's Levio's song. Hey guys, no time for the intro because this is going to be a real damn long one. I'm sliding over cars while I shoot. While I shoot. Hey, think that I'm some cruise. But bitch, I'll probably you with that too. Just kidding, don't y'all, don't y'all know me already. So this is going to be, guys, the entire season four Fortnite storyline for Battle Royale. I'm going to be explaining this in chronological order from week one until week ten. I'm obviously going to be covering what we know from week one to eight, and obviously what we don't know but could potentially happen in the last two weeks of season four. I want to make this as clear and concise as possible, but it's going to help if you guys have seen my Save the World mode because Epic Games is a brilliant company and they managed to both not only just separate the storyline but intertwine it and include it to make one big story that I think is going to have a climax in season 5 and be potentially a really cool thing that I'm excited to show you guys. I highly recommend watching those videos if you're only going to watch two. The first two I'd like you to watch is just what's inside a shield potion. I'm going to have that up here and also what is powering the battle bus. And you know I've decided to make this video because I've seen that nobody else has made a season four video and i feel like a lot of people are missing out on a lot of key potential points that nobody's explaining but explain everything that's going on in the season first i need to represent each character's faction or group because there are a lot of characters and a lot of groups to discuss about what each is doing they all have a representative symbol and they are the good guys over here the bad guys over here the secret service over here and obviously the infamous blockbuster. People being a little bit extra on my ass about the other characters that aren't introduced in this, but they were added as skins. We will consider them for the time being as neutral until Epic Games, I guess, puts them into the storyline. These are many characters like the Moisty Merman, the Sky Stalker, the Bandolier, the Rapscallion, the Scr Scoundrel, the Wingman, the Blue Striker. But without further ado, here are the characters. <laughs> Season 4, we are introduced to a loading screen summarizing the major themes of the season, which are meteors, movies, and obviously superheroes. This loading screen represents neutral characters, which means these characters don't really have much purpose in the story, who are making a random film in Moisty Myers, probably with the Moisty Merman, being struck by an actual meteorite. And this is shown clearly because we're seeing the green screens, this is obviously not staged. The meteors, as we know have crashed into multiple areas leaving a multitude of a substance known as hop rocks. They are large rocks that when split provide an energy source that's power is potentially more useful than what is already known which is blue glow. Blue glow is from save the world and it powers the battle bus and many other things so if you haven't watched those videos I recommend you do so. The constant hunt for an extremely powerful energy source like I've mentioned in previous videos to reach Dr. Vindertech in an alternate dimension, hop rocks are seen as an extremely valuable resource and could give the person who holds them power, wealth, and status. And so the government or the secret service manages to reach them first. Obviously, like what taxes, what else? David, problem. David, I mean, I know you're a sophisticated guy. The world is a mess. 
the world is as angry as it gets. And they collect them and bring them to a certain lair for harvesting. Alongside the hop rocks, the Secret Service finds what we know as Dusty Divot, a large rock that seems to be carrying something living inside of it. The Secret Service recognizes this power and begins to set up camp as the divot overgrows with life. <laughs> Now week two introduces a specific challenge known as dancing in front of different film cameras and this challenge was introduced to season two in my opinion to suggest the future irony that is about to happen because if you haven't seen my last couple videos Battle Royale is a VR simulation used to train soldiers for save the world mode. We are introduced to our first villain here as well known as Omega. Omega hears about the power of the Hop Rocks and begins to search for its power along with the secret service. He causes a catastrophe at the prison grasping some power for himself from the hazmat workers. <laughs> Omega's cataclysmic events spread towards the good guys and they wonder on the purpose of his attack. What was he doing attacking the government? Keep in mind the government or the secret services, whichever one you want to call them, have done an excellent job masking the meteor incident as part of a new upcoming film that has everybody extremely excited and not worried about their death. If you have been paying attention to my Save the World videos, you would know that the government's logo is very similar to the one called Vindertech. And Vindertech Labs used to be a scientific group within the real world that engineered machinery to operate off of Blue Glow. However, once the real world was overrun by husks or zombies, many retreated within their husk defense bases, and Battle Royale suggested to be a VR simulation. But why is the Vindertech logo not the same? Are the Secret Service being chromium and diecast? suggested to be robotic as beings who are under control? Does somebody purposefully send Dr. Vindertech to another dimension? And is there a true antagonist behind this whole scheme of Battle Royale and Save the World with the Meteors? <laughs> hey. Hey. Week 4, we have our answer. Omega is controlling the beings of the Secret Service to collect all the hop rocks and bring them to his lair, suggested by the multiple scattered trucks around the map going along the various roads all towards his lair. But what does he need this power for? A rocket. Is this rocket to blow up the entire VR simulation so that people can be free and escape from it? Are they trapped in inside of it for the first place? Is it a means to escape just for Omega? We are unsure about what the rocket it does currently but we know that it is very very important the good guys begin to understand what's going on at their base which is on the other side of the map and as a defense mechanism for both sides they both begin to recruit to their ranks with a poster manifesting carbide on the good side and the other manifesting omega on the bad side the fight for the power of the hop rocks is on meanwhile vegetation begins to appear in the form of mushrooms and apples roots begin to grow irregularly out of the ground and the meteor is melting as the power of the hop rocks burst forth. Recruiting finishes, the all-out battle between good and evil commences, and where else better than Tilted Towers, the place where we thought the meteor was gonna strike first. The interesting observation is, where are the guns? Why are they only using a fist and pickaxes? Why are they not all using anything else? Any questions? Put your goddamn hand down. And then week six happens and we're just like, wait, what the? Are you no, no. This fight was all fake and staged. Yo! Oh, where are you going? And this was all for another movie? Well, there were obvious hints that this movie was the one that was covering up the meteor catastrophe. No guns in the last loading screen, the constant movie cameras everywhere, but something odd peeks out of this loading screen that in fact does make something real of it. Omen is at the very top of the rocket, looking very, very evil, and like he's about to do something that he shouldn't. This suggests that the government made a movie, or the secret services, that audience bought into, like the neutral characters, and loved, but in the end, there's no good guy to save the day. It is only the evil who control the rocket and will end up taking over everybody's minds, and freeing them from the VR just to be locked up again, 
under Omega's control. It is only the evil who control the rocket. There are no good guys. They were only brought up as actors to be staged for this whole meteorite catastrophe. And they will be the people that don't do anything once Omega takes control. And with all these questions about evil being the only true side of this story, is there even a hope? With week 7, we have our answer again, the visitor arrives. He breaks out of the divot with immense power, destroying multiple cars and a helicopter, and harnesses the power of the Hop Rocks to travel to the evil lair as fast as possible to stop the rocket. Omega has the good guys under his thumb, or potentially they don't even exist. Omega is now ready to start his plans. Launch sequences of the rocket begin projecting all over every single television on the island, and a countdown begins. Where are the good guys? Where are they? Whether they they figure out what's going on or if they even exist to begin to stop Omega is unknown but potentially we will find out within the last two weeks of the loading screen. It's been a long time. I've been on this road. I'm wrecking my mileage. With week 8, another plot twist begins. The visitor breaks into the evil lair where the rocket is held and nobody is in sight. Has he overcome Omega? Is he planning to save the island or destroy it? Boosters fueled by Hop Rocks are found attached to the rocket, meaning that he will fly out of the planet to let it blow up into space or into safety, or he is using it for himself. Who is the visitor? What are his true intentions? Is he good or bad? Is he Dr. Vindertech from the other dimension? And in the end, we know the rocket has been launched. Obviously week 9 has not happened yet regardless of the challenges being out so we don't know what will transpire but data miners have found that the rocket has been launched in the next version being version 4.5 and whether the rocket is launchable in game or not is unknown but it says that the rocket was malfunctioned perhaps by the good guys and landed onto Moisty Myers destroying over 80% of it. A bunker is hidden right next to Wailing Woods potentially signifying that either the good guys guys have hidden there during the explosion of the rocket onto Moisty Mire because it's on their side of the battle royale map or it is for the public to not die. us to the last week here week 10 this will be the week that propels us into the new season being season 5. I think the next setting will be an apocalyptic setting based off of the fact of the rocket malfunctioning and destroying a lot of the land in Moisty Myers. I love how Epic Games is tying in both Save the World and Battle Royale into such a magnificent story that isn't just a cookie cutter blah 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 hero beats the bad guy. Week 6 added such a marvelous curve to the story that had me Stumped trying to figure out what was going on. Many people believe that this is leading to a huge LTM mode like Infinity Gauntlet that's a 50v50 mode where two bosses are on each end of the map kind of like in a MOBA so you'd have the good guys on one side probably with the visitor over there and the bad guys on the other side with the Secret Service. What we know is that the movie was definitely a cover-up for the media or for the neutral characters but the visitor storyline is definitely the one that is happening and concurrent. What's the real purpose of the rocket and why Moisty Meyer? In my opinion, if Epic wants to make something cool, I don't understand why they don't focus on the divot where they can make like a little beach inside the divot or make something cool in there rather than Moisty Myers, which is on the edge of the map and many people don't really go to. I like that they're doing this. I like that they're taking something just like the loading screens and making us question everything that we're seeing with the variation of the VR and maybe Maybe that's why the blockbuster skin for many was so underwhelming because the supposed blockbuster of Fortnite is just a complete scam. I'm in the demon of village,